Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this video, we learn some basics about capacitors. Okay, capacitors basically consists of two conducting plates, so one plate and the second plate, separated uh, from each other by some material. The material could be air, it could be any other material, dielectric material. And so the separation of the two forms a capacitance. Now the value of the capacitance depends on three factors. Number one is the dielectric material, or the property of the dielectric material, or permittivity, permittivity of the dielectric material area of the plates, so area of the plate and divided by the distance or the separation between the two plates. The unit of capacitance is farad. Now if we connect the two plates by means of a voltage source then the charge will start flowing positive charge on one plate and negative charge on the other plate and the amount of charge can be calculated by this formula Q is equal to CV where C is the capacitance and V is the applied voltage. Capacitors are commercially available in different values and different types you can see in the figure larger capacitors or smaller capacitors these are called paper capacitors for all kinds. They are also classified as whether it has fixed or variable capacitors. Uh, the symbol for variable capacitor is it is denoted by an arrow. There is another classification of the capacitors that is polar capacitor or non-polar capacitors. Now the difference between the two is their size. For the same value like 220 microfarad, the polar capacitor will be smaller in size. And that is why it is preferred in a circuit where size is important. The disadvantage of the polar capacitor is that it has a polarity. So like this line shows negative. This diagram shows that upper is positive and therefore lower is negative. So while connecting in this circuit, we have to keep this point in mind. We have to connect this terminal uh, with the negative and the other terminal with positive. Whereas in polar capacitor, uh, non-polar capacitor, it doesn't matter uh, which terminal you connect to what. Now let's uh, study the current and voltage relationship. We have learned that the current through capacitor I is denoted by dQ over dt and also Q is C into V. So if you put the value of Q in this case, so our equation will become I is equal to C dV by dt. Now to find voltage, we just need to manipulate this. So we take all this on the other side. So our equation will become dV equals 1 over C I dt. And now if you integrate both sides, then we get V by integrating dV. Here 1, C, 1 over C comes out and integration of I dt. Now this integration is from negative infinity to any time t. There is another way of writing the same that instead of uh, taking the integration from negative to t, we can take the integration from 0 to t but then in that case we have to add the initial value, initial voltage which was present at the time of at the time zero or before time zero. Also once we have found the voltage we can use the formula 
omega equals half cv square to find the energy stored in the capacitor. Now two important properties we'll uh, discuss in this slide. If you have a capacitor along with say, a resistor of some value and we connect to a 12 volt battery, the capacitor will start charging. Now this charging process is not instantaneous, it takes some time to charge. Some time to charge and when it is starting from zero and going to final value, this intermediate time is called the transient period. And once it has reached the final value and after that the time period is called steady state period. So, uh, we can conclude that the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantly. It will take some time to change. The second property is that a capacitor behaves like an open circuit for DC input. So this is the capacitor. We have connected it through a battery. So the battery has charged the capacitor. And once the capacitor is fully charged, it will now behave like an open circuit because no charge can flow through this. So we can uh, denote the capacitor under DC condition as open circuit. Now, uh, let's do a very simple example. We need to calculate the charge Q. The capacitance is given to be 3 picofarad and the voltage is 20 volt. We also need to calculate the energy stored in the capacitor. So we have learned the formula Q equals CV. So we just, the, just put the value. C is 3 picofarad. That was 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 and V is 20 volts, so we add V, so the charge is 60 pico coulomb. And since we have the voltage, we can find the energy, half CV square, so 1 over 2 C is 3 pico, multiplied by 20 square, which becomes 400, so the net energy stored is 600 pico joules. Now this is a practical circuit. In this circuit you can see we have two capacitance, capacitors and they are connected to a DC source of 6 milliampere. We need to find the energy stored in each capacitor. So as we have learned the formula for energy, half CV square this means that we have to find the voltage across this capacitor and the voltage across this capacitor. Only then by applying this formula we can find the energy. So let's call the voltage of the upper capacitor as V1 and the other one as V2. Now we need to find V1 and V2. So we apply the DC condition and we have learned that under DC condition the capacitor behaves like an open circuit. So our equivalent circuit will look like this. The capacitance open here, the capacitor open here. And we can uh, for our ease just eliminate the extra arms. So if we eliminate these then our circuit will look like this. So we need to find the voltage V1 and also we need to find this voltage V2 which is actually the voltage across 4 kilo. So to find the voltages we need to find the current through the circuit and you can see this current is dividing into one path and second path. So we take help of current division rule to find the current I. I can be found by the formula that we have learned, total current divided by total resistance multiplied by opposite arm. So 
So this is the opposite term. So we multiply by three kilo, and our answer becomes two milliampere. So the current I is two milliampere. Now we can find V1, two kilo multiplied by two milliampere I. So two kilo into I, that is two thousand into two milliamperes. So that becomes four volts. So V1 is four volt. Now V2 is the voltage across this resistor. So same way, uh, 4000 I, 4000 into 2 milliampere gives 8 volt. So now we have found the two voltages. We can find the two energies. Omega 1 is half C1 V1 square. Putting the value of uh, the capacitor that was here, uh, 2, 2 milli. 2 millifarad and the voltage 4 square. So it, the answer becomes 16 millijoule. Similarly, we can find omega 2 or the energy of the second capacitor. Another example, similar way, we need to find the energy stored in the capacitors. So one capacitor here, the second capacitor. And as we have learned, we need to find the voltage across this and the voltage across the 10 microfarad capacitor. So from here, it is very clear that the voltage V1 is the voltage across 3K resistor. So, similarly, the voltage V2 is the voltage across 10 microfarad, but how to calculate V2? V1 is easy. V1, if we can find the current as we did in the previous case, first we open the two capacitors, then we trim the extra arms. So this becomes our simplified circuit. And if you take the current I in the circuit, then we can calculate I by Ohm's law, V over R. So 10 volt divided by 1K plus 3K plus 6K. So the current becomes 1 milliampere. Now from here, the current multiplied by 3K will give V1. So V1 is 3K multiplied by I is 1 volt. What about V2? It's slightly difficult, but if you just see, this is the voltage we are trying to find. So this voltage is the voltage drop in the circuit on the right hand side. So the voltage drop across 3K and 6K will be V2. So we can calculate. 3k plus 6k multiplied by current that is 9k into 1 milliampere equals 9 volt. Now I know some students have difficulties in visualizing this. In that scenario you can also use KVL. So we can just write the KVL equation from this loop or you can write the KVL equation from this loop. Still you can find V2. So let's see here. If you find the KVL in the first loop, so going from left corner, negative 10 plus 1 kilo into I plus V2. So negative 10, 1 kilo into I plus V2, and we need to find V2. So by solving this, this is minus 10, and this becomes 1 volt. So uh, V2 becomes 9 volt, as we found here. Same is the answer. So now that we have found V1 and V2, we can find the energy by the formula half Cv1 square and half Cv2 square. And if you calculate, I have skipped the calculation, you should get an answer. In the first case, 405 microjoule, and in the second case, 90 microjoule. Okay, let's have some idea how to calculate when the capacitances are connected in series or in parallel. Now the working for the capacitance is just opposite of the resistance. 
That means when the capacitances are in parallel, we treat them as series uh, resistance circuit. That means we add. We add all the capacitances when the capacitances are capacitors are in parallel. But when the capacitors are in series, then we follow the parallel rule of the resistance circuit. So that means one over C equivalent is one over C one plus one over C two plus one over C three. An example here. We need to find C equivalent. Now, if you look from the other end, these two are in series, and if you remember that when they are in series, we treat them as a parallel resistance formula. So that means we uh, calculate the five parallel twenty, and this will be four microfarad. So five parallel twenty comes four microfarad. So we replace this by four microfarad. And now six is there, and this twenty is here. Now you can see these three are in parallel. And if you remember, we just said that when they are in parallel, they are added. So we just add uh, all three. So this will become thirty micro. So thirty micro and sixty micro in series, and in series we treat them as parallel. So. The parallel combination is 60 into 3 divided by 60 plus 3, so that will give 20 microfarad. So this is how uh, you calculate the equivalent capacitance.